I'd like to welcome you all today to this most solemn occasion, remembering Hammond police officers and officers from all across the nation who gave their lives in the performance of their duties. What a wonderful world we could live in if only these bad things could stop happening. Terrorism, murders, drugs, gang retaliations. That is what the men and women in the Hammond Police Department and the men and women of law enforcement across America accomplish on a daily basis. They put on their uniform and their badge on and they walk in the shadows of the unknown. Uncertain if they are gonna be greeted with gratitude for saving the day or criticized for weeks on end. There is no joy in arresting a husband or a father for domestic abuse. And there's no joy in take a mother, uh, taking a mother away from her children for neglect or physical abuse. And there is no greater pain than seeing our youth dying in our streets over gang disputes or our youth wasting away incarcerated in our jails and prisons. That is the thankless job the men and women of the Hammond Police Department face. They don't do their jobs for praise. They don't do it for glory. They certainly don't do it to get wealthy. They do it because it's their duty. We entrust them. They took a sacred oath to protect and serve our citizens, and they do it well. You see it on TV on a daily basis. People disrespecting the police are protesting the handling of a given situation. Funny enough, a lot of these same people that are protesting or arguing about the way a certain situation was handled are the first people that are going to call a police officer if they get carjacked, burglarized, or assaulted. It's easy for the media, for a lot of members in the, citizen, in the citizenry, to play Monday morning quarterback with a given situation. But imagine somebody waving a gun in your face, threatening to shoot you. You don't get the luxury of a day or two to assess the situation and to analyze how you would have done things differently. These men and women of law enforcement have to make a split-second decision or risk the chance of getting injured or dying on duty. That's what police officers across the country have to contend with daily, split-second decisions. That's why I was so distressed just last week about something that happened in the U.S. House of Representatives. And I wanted to talk about it because it's appropriate. The Thin Blue Line Act. We've been talking about the Thin Blue Line. The Thin Blue Line Act passed the House of Representatives last week, May 18, 2017. This bill amends the federal criminal code to expand the list of aggregating factors in death penalty cases to include the killing or targeting of a law enforcement officer, a firefighter, or other first responder. Congratulations to Congress. They finally did something that most Americans agree with. Unfortunately for me, my own political party, the Democratic Party, including our own congressman from the 1st Congressional District, Congressman Pete Viskoski, voted against the Thin Blue Line Act. Why? What were they thinking? In this day and age, why wouldn't our congressman and his fellow Democratic House members want to show America's first responders that the U.S. Congress and the Democratic Party stands with them, admires them, supports them? Instead, almost to a person, every single Democratic House member voted against the Thin Blue Line Act. To me, and many of my friends in law enforcement, that vote by the Democrats in the U.S. House of Representatives makes our party look like we don't appreciate the lives of America's first responders. And it makes me sad as a member of the Democratic Party. And it pisses me off as the mayor of the city of Hammond. In my opinion, this vote should have been 435 to 0 in favor of the Thin Blue, Bl Thin Blue Line Act. You know, in Hammond, the last two times that we had an officer-involved shooting, the perpetrator was going after an EMS personnel working on an ambulance crew. And the Hammond police officer had to intervene with deadly force to save the life of an EMS personnel. The Thin Blue Line Act, approved by the House Republican majority and imposed by almost every single Democratic congressman expands the definition of a first responder to include EMS personnel and firefighters, along with police officers. As a fellow Democrat, I am sorely disappointed that my party did not show proper support and respect to America's first responders. 
I have the utmost respect for our police officers. I would not want to be in their shoes on any single day. I am proud to say that the city of Hammond has some of the best officers in the United States of America, and I thank you for your service. We're here today not to mourn our fallen brothers and sisters in blue, but to honor their memory and their commitment to keep our community safe and the life they dedicated to the service of the citizens of Hammond. It has been said throughout history that without sacrifice, there can be no peace. These men and women honored here today on this memorial have made the ultimate sacrifice for the preservation of peace within our community. Although these officers have ended their watch far too soon, their legacies and their dedication to service will live on forever in our hearts. These brave men and women will forever live as examples of what the best of our country and our city has to offer. It is my sincere hope that we can find peace and comfort in knowing that they died doing what they loved. Thank you for your service.